Hi, I'm Scott, the founder of Goldwing Docs. Today's video is going to be a little bit different because it's about one of our own. Our own member, Not Johnson, was involved in a serious crash recently. He had an Invo Innov K2 camera on his bike, the same camera I have on my bike, and it captured the crash on video. He was kind enough to share that video with us so that we might learn from it. So let's have a look at it. Coming up next on Goldwing Docs. <laughs> So John, not Johnson, as we know him, was traveling in Southern Oregon on September 10th. Uh, it was about 9.30 at night. It was a black, dark, moonless night. It was uh, US 97 northbound approaching 422. He was riding his 2015 GL 1800, uh, a really nice bike, and he was towing a Compact Cap Mini Mate camper. If you haven't seen that camper, it looks like this. So here's what not Johnson said in his own words. He hit a patch of sand, got into a wobble. He ran out of pavement before he could recover. The trailer then flipped on its side and dragged across the road. He went airborne across a four-foot ditch. At impact, he was traveling at 29 miles per hour, although the Innov camera shows in kilometers an hour, but I'll, I'll say miles. He flew through the windshield, landed in front of the bike. The bike was laying on its right side. The trailer was laying on its left side. He was pretty shaken up, but believe it or not, unhurt. But why was he unhurt? Well, I'd like to think that one of the main reasons was he was wearing full gear. First gear mesh pants and jacket, boots, gloves, helmet, the works. All of his gear showed signs of impacting the ground and protecting him, but it did his job. He, and as he says, it was money well spent. Remember that. As with most accidents, this was caused by a chain of events. Let's have a look at the video. At this point, you can hear him talking well, swearing, and he's assessing his condition. The smoke you see there is likely not smoke at all. It's probably steam from a ruptured radiator or coolant line. Someone saw that the accident had occurred and called the police. Police and medical arrived and checked him out shortly thereafter. The bike and the trailer were towed, and the next day he rented a U-Haul truck to load the remains of his beautiful GL1800 and his trailer into the U-Haul truck and drive home. It's always easy to armchair quarterback the next day. Let's see if we can learn from this. Let's watch the video in slow motion. Here's the exit he's coming up on. He's traveling northbound and he's exiting to the right. He's traveling on the highway, approaching that exit. Now at this point, it almost looks like he has a bit of indecision here. He started to exit, decided not to, uh, let's talk about that in a minute. So now he's exiting, but just barely, and he's in trouble. There's pea gravel on the road. That's just bad luck. Here's a picture of that same area showing the gravel at the edge of the road. At this point, the bike is sliding in the gravel, but he manages to push it back onto the asphalt. Is it possible he could have saved it at this point? I'm not sure. Maybe if he stayed up straight, got hard on the brakes, and if the trailer wasn't too heavily loaded, he might have been able to recover at this point. At this point, he might still make it, but he's still carrying way too much speed into this corner. And as a result, he's back into the gravel. He's out of options. Still at 45 miles per hour, in the gravel, in a hard bank, and now the trailer is starting to sway. In this picture, you can see he's made it past the, the right-hand curve, but it's just too late. Now at this point, the bike is totally out of control. The trailer is wagging the dog. The trailer is now on its side and dragging behind him on the road. The bike is completely unstable and out of control. If you look closely here, you can see straight ahead, just barely to the right, there's a road. If he had managed to hit that road, he might have been able to stop without a whole lot of damage. Unfortunately, he wasn't lucky, and the trailer steered him directly into that ditch. 
So what are the takeaways we can learn from this video? It was an extremely dark night. Was he tired? Had he been riding a long time? Was he maybe not as attentive as he might have been? All things you could think about next time you're riding. I mentioned indecisiveness. This is an important one. When you make a decision and decide to turn, slow down, change the direction of your motorcycle, you typically need to stay with that decision. Because if you second guess yourself and try to undo that decision, you typically are not going to have enough time or road or distance or corner remaining if you decide actually that first decision was the right one, I need to go back there. And I think that's exactly what happened here. He started the, the exit, decided, oh, is that the right exit? Let me stop. Oh, wait, that is the exit. And now it's too late. Now you're almost off the road and you're in the gravel. So when you make, when you make a decision on your bike, you're going to take that exit, take the exit. If you decide at the last second, oh, this is the wrong exit. Oh, well, take the exit anyway. You can always get back on the highway. He was towing a trailer. Now I tow a trailer and it's pretty much the same size as his trailer. And I do it all the time. I've done it for thousands of miles and it's, it's perfectly safe to do. But you have to remember your stopping distance is increased tremendously. You also have a fair bit of weight in that trailer pushing you along. And if you're hard in a corner, it can very easily just push the back end of your bike out. And if you're already in gravel where you don't have a lot of traction, that's bad news. Also, make sure the trailer is loaded correctly. If you have the weight too far back in the trailer or too far forward, so you have too much weight on the tongue or not enough weight on the tongue, it can cause severe handling problems and make the bike uncontrollable. At GAT, all the gear, all the time. I am a tremendous proponent of wearing gear. I do not ride my motorcycle without boots, pants, jacket, helmet, gloves, every time, all the time. I have come off a bike at speed and I left a considerable amount of skin on the ground as a stupid 17 year old who thought he was immortal. I really don't care to do that again. It really hurts and it really sucks. People live because they wear their gear. People die because they don't have gear or they're severely injured. Wearing some gear can make the difference between months in the hospital of recovery and walking away like John did. Lastly, like I said, it's easy to armchair quarterback. But things happen really, really fast. You can look at this now and say, oh, I would have done this and I would have done that. But when it's happening to you, the adrenaline's flowing, you're caught by surprise, things happen really fast. From the point where he realized he was first in trouble to the point of impact is less than 10 seconds. Do you think you'd be able to identify that problem, get in the gravel, out of the gravel, back into the gravel, realize you've lost traction, the trailer's swaying, and I mean, that's a lot to deal with in just a few seconds. And the last couple of seconds, he was just along for the ride. Watch the video one more time in real time and notice how quickly things happen. Try to put yourself in that mindset. Do you think you'd be able to make the same decisions? Well, I hope you learned something valuable from this video, and I really wanted to thank not Johnson, John, for taking the time to, and allowing us to share this video with you so that you might learn from it, because you really got to learn from the mistakes of others because you won't live long enough to make them all yourself. If you like this video and you'd like to see more like it, please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe in the space below. Uh, if you want to see the original post of this video, along with John's original description and maybe actually make some comments back to him and let him know what you think, there's a link to that on our Goldwing Docs forum in the description below. Thanks for watching.